folks. Uh, I'm with my buddy Jed today. We're taking a couple minutes out of our day of, uh, of fishing here on the Susquehanna River to talk about um, something river safety related that's, that's really important. Um, we want to talk a little bit about strainers and, uh, and it's a swift water rescue sort of term and Jed you, you, um, you have some certifications for you know, your, your job professionally. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that and then we'll, we'll define what a strainer is. Yeah, so I'm a swift water technician for uh, being a career firefighter and EMT um, for the county that I work in. We train, we just had a refresher here recently, but we train at least a few times a year. Uh, some of it's boat ops, a lot of it is rope systems and shallow water crossings and essentially the aftermath of when people get in trouble with you know, certain features of the river. Uh, today we'll talk about strainers, and that's one that catches a lot of people up, literally. So, right. um, you know, a lot of times it's too late by the time we get there to effectively rescue somebody. In most positions, it's a recovery. So, right. um, you know, unfortunately. The most, the most important thing, I think, with a strainer is just to identify them. And, and we positioned ourselves here in front of one. If you look behind us, uh, you'll see all those all those uh, branches down there, all that that wood, that uh, log jam, and that is a strainer. So a strainer is anything that that water is passing through, but you and your boat will not. And I think the most important thing, I think it's a skill that we all develop as river anglers, is just having our head on a swivel and, and seeing it coming before we we get into trouble. That's correct. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, the boat naturally is usually loaded, you know, a little rear heavy. So the boat wants to float with the bow upstream. Um, so keeping your head on that pivot, and constantly looking behind you if you are, you know, happen to float backwards or whatnot. Um, that's that's very important in this situation with, you know, dealing with strainers. Right. So when you identify that, you know, your, your trajectory is headed towards one, uh, something that's important to do is just to take the corrective uh, action in terms of your your paddle strokes uh, to you know to make just to change that trajectory. So I'm gonna you know we're, we don't have that much current that we really have too much trouble with it, but I'm gonna demonstrate um, the sweep stroke, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna demonstrate you know which is gonna turn me this way, but I'm also gonna go a second round and do the draw stroke. Uh, the sweep stroke is designed, you know, <laughs> sorry man, basically where you're you're starting close to the boat, you're reaching out away from it, and then you end close, and that turns, you know, turns the boat. It's basically a big C, and that turns the boat away from where you're going. But sometimes you have to do a corrective action much that's much more dramatic because you're the speed of the water coming at it, which we don't really have the speed here. But you have to you have to move your boat quickly from here to here, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to demonstrate with the draw stroke, and then I'm going to do a sculling draw. So let me uh, hop out there and show you what those look like. All right, certainly with the motor, it's easier to come through here, and uh, yeah, you, you come in and you can do with the foot control steering and turn and get away from that. But you don't always have quite that amount of time to do it and sometimes you're not gonna be able to utilize the motor. So let me do it without the ultra. So I'm gonna come in here and change my trajectory with a, with a sweep stroke. As I come in, I don't wanna be pushed into that that strainer it's pushing me towards it so I'm gonna do a sweep stroke on this side and then continue straight the ability to do a sweep stroke is important for so many different maneuvers but the concept is and I'm gonna turn this way now you put it in close at the midpoint you're away and when you're done your offside hand comes all the way across again close far away and then close again. That turns the boat. You can also do a reverse sweep. On this pass I'm going to do the draw stroke and really that's 
designed to move you quickly from here to here in current. So say this current was much faster and I was being pushed into to the strainer at a higher rate of speed than what I am, and I need to be there instead of here. So the draw stroke, you insert the paddle blade out of way and you draw it into your hip. And then you turn it 90 degrees. Bring it into your hip, turn it 90 degrees. So done it a much quicker rate of speed. You can tell that it's moving, it's moving me sideways. Another variation of it is the is the sculling draw. And that doesn't require that you pull the, the blade out of the water. I'm just moving sideways. It's sort of like Hey Jed, you, you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Yes, how, how do you put the peanut butter on the bread? Oh, I smear it like this. Yeah, all right. Well, that's your, <laughs> that's your, you know, your knife, and you got the peanut butter, and you're just changing the angle of the blade as you smooth that peanut butter on there. So, sweet draw stroke and sculling draw is, is something that's gonna. They're tools that are gonna help you to change your trajectory so you avoid the strainers. So, main concepts that we got to be able to recognize a strainer. Something that water goes through, but you and your boat will not. Keep your head on a swivel. And if you if you see yourself heading towards one, take the corrective action to change your trajectory to avoid it with either sweep stroke or, or a draw or a sculling draw. Um, one thing that's, that's important to note though, when you're when you're in a aggressive white water, um, if you take a swift water rescue class or if you take a um, you know beginning white water course, what do they what do they teach you? You also worked as a raft guide on right. the on the Shenandoah. If someone fell out of, of one of your rafts, so the the safety swim position or defensive swim position, um, if you come out of the the watercraft. And moving water, swift water, even in water just like this moving through here, um, your first reaction is going to be to want to stand up or whatnot, and that puts you in a position of possibly a foot entrapment. A lot of these, like uh, rocks, have an undercut on the front side of it, so that'll hold that'll hold your your foot, your arm, you know, whatever appendage is hanging out. So here's something that would be two rocks. Show me with your hand how a foot entrapment occurs. So if you're coming down, the and, current's coming this way, right? And you want to stand up. You put your foot, your feet down, and it'll wedge right in there. So the current is still going to flow. So ultimately, you're going to be ending up with your face down in the water this way, and your foot completely, maybe even broken, uh, you know, wedged in that rock. The current never gives up. It doesn't pulse or anything else. So. It will continue to apply that pressure to you. So the concept of a safe swimmer position is mm -hmm. if you're in that strong current and there's rocks and logs and whatever else is under there, get your feet up. Yeah, you want to be able to see both feet. Absolutely. Um, you know, you can bounce your bottom off of, you know, rocks and even logs and that kind of stuff as well. But as soon as your feet get down below you, uh, you're definitely in, in, in position for more danger in that regard. So, you know, you're wearing a PFD, will usually keep your torso up pretty good, your face is out of the water. You're gonna be about as parallel to the surface as you can get, but concentrate on, you know, feet keeping up, your feet up. And then, downstream. Yep, and you can do what they call a defensive swim at that point too. So essentially, if you need to ferry, if you need to get out of the way of a strainer, another one downstream, um, you know, you're gonna lead with your head almost. So you're gonna work backwards, more upstream position to ferry across in that same position so you know, with your feet up and, uh, and backstroking. I know from taking a swift water rescue class years ago um, that the safe swimmer position definitely saves lives. It, it saves people from that, that foot entrapment that can drown you. It can hold you, the current holds you down and you just can't bring your head up above the water to get a breath. Um, but there are cases where you abandon it and I know when I took uh, the Swift Water Rescue class, um, they actually did a simulated strainer. They took a PVC pipe about that big, 
ran a chain through it and anchored it wow. in okay. current, right? And the concept was that if you if you hit it that strainer feet first in safe swimmer position, what happens is your your feet hit and then what goes down is your head and you're you're stuck there. So yes, if you can take some, you know, um, maneuvers swimming and moving out of the move your body trajectory out of the way of the strainer right. that's what you want to do but if it's not going to happen if it's just you're going to be slammed into it one way or the other you abandon that you know that approach and you instead of having feet downstream you know um, toes out of the water you yeah. turn around and you swim at it as fast as you can and you try to climb climb your way up it so yeah. Yeah, um, again it turns to a, an aggressive swim at that time and the uh, same thing with uh, reboarding a boat or um, anything else, keeping your body as high in the water as possible and really going. And you have to be aggressive with it, you know, to get up and over some objects. Yeah. Um, the, the goal is to get your hands on the highest part of that piece of wood yep. that and you can and pull yourself up. Carry the momentum from the current and everything else because, again, you don't want to be, you know, pinned in a situation of your, your feet and your legs are underneath of you at that point. I know when I took the class, they, they, uh, the instructor offered, you know, who thinks they can get over this feet first in safe swimming position? And I said, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I get in the water and I'm drifting down and I kind of look peripherally and, and I can hear the instructor talking to the other students in the class and I hear them all laugh and I'm like, what? all right, what's going on? At that point, I kind of knew I was being set up. Yeah. Um, I hit that thing, my, my feet hit, it went up to about my butt, and then and then the current caught my shoulders, and I just flipped around and just slammed. Yeah. And, and I learned, I ended up with some pretty bad bruises from it, but I learned right then, like, it just isn't going to happen. And then we all got to to uh, to test and, and try and train going over it headfirst and climbing over it. All right, so I don't have a PVC pipe in a chain and two anchors to, to demonstrate this. So I, I brought a friend of mine. Oh yeah? Yeah. You, you might have met him before. Um, we got we got G.I. Joe here. Oh, that's Lonzo. Yeah, it is Lonzo. Lonzo Stalker Wilkinson. Yeah. Uh, why don't you pop him open? Okay. He's going to help demonstrate uh, the correct and incorrect way to, uh, to swim a strainer. We've set up a strainer right over there for him. And uh, Lons is gonna help us understand uh, the right and wrong way to do this. All right, there he is, no weapons. All right, so here's Lonzo in safe swimmer position, in current, headed towards the strainer. His feet hit, what happens? The current catches him, down he goes. And that's the demise of Lonzo. He's done. No! I actually almost lost him. Yeah, he almost oh. went under the hundred <laughs> <laughs> So this time we're gonna have Alonzo change direction. He's in safe swimmer position and he realizes there's no avoiding it. He turns around and aggressively swims, pulls himself up, and at some point he's able to keep his head above water and uh, climb up onto the the rock and he's good to go. Yay Lonzo, <laughs> you didn't die. So a few important takeaways that uh, that we went over today. You know, I have to practice that regularly for the profession that, I, that I'm employed by. Um, but if you're a serious kayak angler and you're fishing the rivers, you're in white water, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and take a swift water class. It's important that we know how to identify a strainer. And we know how to change our trajectory if we're getting close to one, you know, whether it be a paddle stroke or applying, you know, a motor like we use on these. Um, and ultimately, you know, if, if it were to be the situation of you find yourself outside of the boat, be able to do the offensive swim and, and self persevere you know, get yourself out of the trouble, out of the danger. So I think that uh, that wraps up. What we want over here today, and uh, good luck, stay safe. Catch some fish. Sounds good.
Kraft and I'll do it.